Hi everybody, this is a horse named Sasha, a client's horse that I'm going to be working on today to take a look at where her pain points are and what we're going to be doing from a red light basis for her. So <clears throat> the first thing we're going to do is we're just going to offer our hand to her to see if we can get a connection. She's maybe looking over there so I might rub her just a little bit, bring her towards me. There we are. Offer the, so we get the horseman's handshake so we're good. <clears throat> and from there we're going to go next into the next step. Now we're going to take a look at opening the bladder meridian. So I'm going to put the, over, the rope over my hand. Again, make sure she's okay. Starting from the top, I'm going to work myself down to the shoulder. And I'm looking for anything that could be alarming with her that's going to feel hot, cold, possibly anything that is, um, any areas that she reacts like, takes a look at me. I'm going to do this three times. And the reason we're doing this is also helps open up her energy with my energy so that way we can both give us more results with the assessment. Once we've opened that three times, everything seems to be pretty good. I might come down and actually rub underneath here too, just to make sure I'm not getting any kind of issues so I can be safe. And then we're ready to move on. All right, so we just got done opening the bladder meridian on both sides of the horse. And then we can start doing the assessment. I like using an RSVP pen. My back's going to be to you a little bit, but I'll try to make it so you can see what's going on. Is we're going to work along the bladder meridian. So I'm going to actually draw a little line for you guys so maybe you can see it on the camera where the bladder meridian area is. So we're going to start with the top and we're just going to rub back and forth and see if we've got a reaction. Come down, we're going to work around the front of the shoulder. Check a little bit over the vertebra, which seems to be pretty good so far. I'm going to turn myself now to, I'm sideways with the horse. I'm going to work over the shoulder. Good. Come across. See if we have any shoulder pain. Put my hand on the opposite side. Push in. We seem to be pretty good. And now we're just going to work along the bladder meridian itself. See if we can find any kind of reaction point all the way down the groove, over the top of the coccyx, under, under the greater chicaner, sacral. Okay, so now you guys see we got one spot that we just got on the, behind the withers. So we're going to check again on the bladder meridian, see if we got something we, and we do. You guys can see the movement here. So that would be lung. And then we're going to check the front. And now we're going to turn her to the opposite side and check the opposite side because we could have a whole different story on the opposite side. So we're going to just make a nice easy turn for the camera. Good. And now we're going to come back and check on top. Down the front. Front shoulder. Over the shoulder along we're getting a reaction again in the withers along the back whoop so now this one here i'm going to turn this way right at the stomach point we are getting a reaction so i'm going to circle that so i know it and maybe now that she gave me that she's going to be a little bit on the opposite side so as i said it can be different on opposite side of one side so i'm getting a little bit at another bladder point over the coccyx under greater chicaner might check a little bit of extra here. So we definitely got something at the withers and the front shoulder. And that's how quick you can do the bladder meridian once you get, or once you get done doing the assessment. So pretty easy to do, tells you a lot. All right, so we just found out through the assessment that we had two main areas that were a concern, one being that at the back of the withers, another one being right around the lumbar area. At this point, we don't know if we have muscle, if we have meridian, or what we have going on that's a problem. So we're going to start with our essential line back pad. I always bring all the equipment to the outside, and I lay this over the horse and let the strap just drop. I already got attached to the opposite side. I reach down like I'm going to grab a cinch and just connect this and just give it a little bit of a tug so it's tighter. Turn this on. It's just a one push. And this is red and infrared. And as you guys can see, the lights are going underneath. It's always good to check. 
and I'm going to run this is going to run for a 10 minute period if I wanted longer I just would push the button multiple times and gives you 10 20 or 30 minutes from there we're going to move on putting a half wrap on the horse so another good wrap that we like to use right away and because many times when you have body issues you have feet issues and when you have feet issues you have body issues plus this is very good for stimulating all the meridians that are on the coronary band on a horse so the half wrap is, is a kind of a u-shape has the battery to the outside so i'm going to turn this on first to make sure that everything is on i bring it down and i place it on the leg holding the battery to the outside pushing around and pulling it tight not super tight but enough that and to the outside and you want to make sure you don't let your horse just run around now the pad will stay on but they can damage if they do get it off and step on it so it's good to just leave them here and just see what kind of reactions you're going to get out of the horse i'm just going to take her for a second we're going to move forward so she gets used to both pads being on her feet as you can tell she can actually feel that pad on her leg and that will stimulate all the circulation between the pad and the pad, the, bat, the half wrap at the same time. So it's a good idea once we put the half wraps on and the wraps on to give them a couple minutes to settle into those before you move on just to make sure they're not having any issues with any wraps on them. And then I'm first gonna go check the hyoid itself and that's by putting your hands on both sides and see if we get a raise of the head which we are seem to be getting some of that. I will check underneath and it seems like it's off to the right check the brachiocephalic you know, I'm getting a little more reaction on the right side so we're going to do this so as you just seen she just licked and chewed that was a great thing, great results. And by waiting for some of the pad to do its job first, that's how we got that. So now we're gonna move on to the hyoid release itself. The um, hyoid was off to the right side, so I'm gonna take and put the gold light on high, the regular light on the opposite side. I'm gonna have her head straight. This is called my Frankenstein move. She is a saddle bread, so she can get a little high. So I'm just going to get high with her until she starts coming down. And I'm just going to move my head and I got my hands laying on both sides of her masseter muscle so it's and we're just going to wait and see what she does. Typically a half a minute to 45 seconds horses will lower their head and will start to lick and chew and um, release. So we're just going to wait for that once the energy gets in. Good girl she's stretching out. And the importance of having the hyoid it centers, it centers the tongue. It allows the horse to be symmetrical from side to side. When it's off to one side, you can get issues where they have troubles with getting a lead from one side versus the other side. You can have trouble with uh, their neck becoming off. And this is not a chiropractic adjustment. This is actually releasing the muscles and tissues and ligaments that are attaching the hyoid to the inside of their head. And, and putting their tongue back on straight. And we have found this is the most humane, easiest way to do this is to use lights. And that's a very common reaction. You just hang out with them. Good girl. It's all good. I've never seen this take longer than two days, but typically it's 30 seconds to 45 seconds to get this done. Uh-huh. And she can get tall. Now some of your more introverted horses may hold inside if you look at her mouth her mouth is a little bit tight so i'm going to give this about another 20 seconds and then i'm going to back off a, lick, a second just to see if she will lick and chew and release with me off the lights 
because there'll be enough energy in her to do what it's supposed to do. But she's kind of going into a zone now. So when she goes into a zone for at least 20 seconds, then I'm going to release. Okay. Good girl. That release she does like that with the hyoid, and she might shake her head, will help her recenter that hyoid because the muscles will release now and, and allow things to lay out. Okay, we're going to move the wrap to the other side, other foot. And we're going to finish the hyoid release. We're going to do three more points. Make sure this is turned on. Okay, so now we're going to go underneath the neck which is what we call the ganache area or area of the throat latch. So we're going to put the gold light on the right side again, pointing them up towards the eye itself. And we're just going to move a little bit again with her. Good girl. She's releasing faster now. Not a good girl. And if I check it now already with that release, she's already now centered. So now we're just going to take care of the brachial cephalic. It's, it's stomach, stomach 10 on both sides. And we just put this on both sides. This is going to release the muscle that comes over and connects to the hyoid itself from over the head. Good girl. In each one of these spots, we sit about 30 seconds on each one of these. And you might see your horse might shake, they might shake their head, they might lick and chew, they might go into a zone. Every horse is a little bit different. All right. And that's how you put the hyoid release in. So we'll move next to the front fascia release. Because we had issues with the front withers and we're using the pad here, we're also going to use a couple points that will help release multiple muscles inside the front shoulder in this area at the same time. So I'm going to put one light up on GV14, which is on the top, right in front of the withers. I'm going to come down the center of the pectoral muscle, find this deep hole, turn the light on high, and bury it in. And we're going to sit here. And you're going to sit here for about anywhere from 45 seconds to a minute and a half. These two points are really, really great on releasing nine different muscles in the front of the shoulder and taking them out of a lot of pain and issues that they may have as far as movement, mobility. The whole goal with horses to get them symmetrical and not asymmetrical so that they're moving the same on each side of their body and uh, muscles are one of the main things that pulls their vertebras their their bones anything out of place so this is a great technique to do this And the amount of time this whole thing takes that I've done from start to finish right now has only been less than 10 minutes. So it doesn't take up a lot of your time to do this. And this is a great place to start and see if we go back and recheck to see if we get all of our pain points go away or if we have to do additional lighting to remove those. But we always start here first. Okay, she's doing pretty good. I'm gonna move to the opposite side from down the center. Find it, put the light in. I don't even have to change to the opposite side. I can do it all from this one side. And we'll wait and see what we get here. Okay, we're getting a little bit more agitation on this side. She's kind of looking down to see what I'm doing. 
And the calmer you can be while doing this, the better it's always going to be because the horse is looking for you for safety in this case because they might be feeling some things with the light after the light gets applied. It does, the endorphins do kick in and take care of any pains, but that usually takes 20 to 30 seconds before that does. So in the meantime, there's some lick and chew. She's gonna show us just a little bit and we're gonna take, we're gonna accept a little bit that she gives us. All right. That should hopefully be taking care of most of the front end issues. We got the front done. We ran 10 minutes on both the back pad and the half wrap on both feet. Now I'm going to move the pad to the back. Um, simply uh, take the pad, leave everything connected, and just move it over the, the lumbar vertebra. Come back over, attach again, turn the back pad on. We're gonna grab the half wrap. So again, once you move the back pads back and the foot pad back, or half wrap back, you wanna give them a couple minutes to settle into this to make sure they're all okay with it. So they can pick their foot up, turn it down, but what we're getting is we're getting a connection from the pad itself all the way down to the foot, getting circulation to move down the back of the leg. Very important for a horse to have this happen. Or wait till she quits dancing, she wants to pee. There it comes. Wow, we didn't get the pee before. So we got this on camera and this is a very common thing that does happen with horses that get agitated when we put the back pad back and the foot pad on because it gets their system working now and where she was trying to pee a couple times before she couldn't but once we put it over the back where we were able to release a little bit that area she was able to uh, urinate and, and eliminate herself. So we'll just give her a second to process through that. All right, so the horse went through a little bit of a release here, so she's kind of parked out, but this is actually a good position for releasing the back end of the horse. These two points will release, again, nine muscles in the back of the horse. Um, I want to first do is come in here and make sure I'm okay to be on the inside of the horse's leg and the stifle to make sure there's no issues of being there, being kicked first. And if it's okay, then we can go move forward to get in here. I'm going to take my pen and check slightly 
of an area that might be hurting her in the back along there. And I'm gonna find this spot by sticking my thumb in the top of the, of the sacral vertebra. That spot is where I'm going to put my Pro Gen 2 light on high. Now normal position, I should be here and here doing this work. I'm gonna do this backwards for you guys just so the camera can see what I'm doing. So I'm putting the one light back here. I'm gonna put another red light on here. I'm gonna to come to the stifle, come inside, go to 45 until I feel the, the rear femur bone. And then we're just gonna come underneath here and sit between these two points. Now some horses will just stand. Some will start to rock. Some will sway, some will drop down in, and I've had horses actually adjust themselves just by putting these two points. So, and uh, the reason that is, is one of the things that we are, the attachment point that we are doing on the inside of the leg is where the psoas muscle actually attaches to the inside of the leg itself. So we are affecting the psoas muscle. That's a very important muscle. That's that muscle that we use for sitting and standing back up. And for the horses, it allows them to reach underneath with their legs and, and be able to really get a nice stride. Um, this, it's a very deep internal muscle that's almost impossible to do much with, but this technique does a great job of releasing the internal muscles that the horses are having some problems with. And we'll just sit here for, again, anywhere from 45 seconds to a minute and a half while the pad systems are doing their work at the same time. A good mathematician once said to me back in high school that a good mathematician works smarter instead of harder. So to me, using, utilizing the pad systems along with our handheld lights at the same time is working very smart. We're getting a lot done at a lot of time without having to work so hard at it. And it's almost anybody can do this. All right, that's been about a minute and a half, so we're just gonna move to the other side. I'm gonna take the half wrap off and put it on the opposite leg. And I usually run the half wraps when I'm doing this for five minutes and the large wrap for 10 minutes. And she hasn't moved from this position yet. We're gonna come back in and do the same thing. I'll be on the opposite side. You might be able to see inside where I'm doing. I'm gonna come in and put the light on the stifle itself first, come up at a 45 until I hit the femur bone. Um, so she is starting to sway a little bit. I'm just gonna move with her. I, she starts fitting a rhythm, which is very common for horses to do. Hers is actually quick, quick. And I'm just going to move my rhythm at the same time. And it's interesting she stayed in this position. There she goes. We are working on animals, so that's her uh, pasture buddy that's in the, in the uh, barn. Good. Now that this is finishing up in the back, we're just gonna move to the front. So we got done doing the back part of the rear fascia release. The next part we're gonna wanna do is we wanna connect the pad systems. Make sure it's on. Yep, it's on. We're gonna connect from the pad systems to the front of the neck. That releases the whole longissimus dorsi muscle. So we're gonna come up to the front. Put our lights on two light technique here. If you have one light, that's fine. You just do both sides. Feel down until you feel the largest bone on each side. Then you're gonna sit here for about 30 seconds. 
and we're going to connect this muscle that attaches from the lumbar vertebra all the way up to, from C4 to C7. But we can only get four to six. Apparently more horses want to get into some of the energy that we're doing. I'm going to move down one more vertebra. Good girl. It's okay. All right, so we got those done. All right, so now we're done doing the red light work with the handheld, so now we're going to shut off the pads and we're going to take the kind of off like you take a saddle blanket off, just pull it right off. Come around to the other side. Reach underneath. Take off the half wrap and then we'll just observe how she does. up for the camera. Why not just back her up? Come on. Good girl. There you go. And we're just going to sit back and give her a minute or two to process to see if we get any reactions. She's wanting to already go to the handler, which is a good thing. I mean, she's coming out. We call this kind of a cooking time, a zone time, where the horse just kind of goes internal and allows, but I know there's a lot of activity in the background, so she's kind of looking at that. There we go. All right, so we allowed the horse to process for a little bit. She still might be doing some processing, but what we're going to do is we're going to, and I always recommend that you leave the horse sit 
for a good hour afterwards, put them in a stall, just let them, don't, don't, don't take them riding right away, it's not fair to them. Give them a chance to uh, get through this and get all, the, get all the benefit of what you're doing. But what we're gonna do now is we're gonna come back over here and we're gonna reassess what we had gotten in this area here and see if we still have something. So we still have a little bit at the back of the withers on both sides. But this area here is good. This area here is really good. So the area over the, all the back that we had gotten anything in here is all good. So all that pain is gone. So we have a little bit that's still in the withers itself. Now the more than likely that will go away by itself. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna give a little extra red light work. So I'm going to put the one on high, the other one on red. I'm gonna put them right where the pain is at, on the horse itself. And I'm just gonna move up three vertebra. And don't be surprised when you let the horse out that they go out and they might roll. They might drink a lot of water. All these things are part of the process of what they go through. See if we've got any more here. And a lot of times that little bit of stimulus is all you need to get rid of that pain that was right there. So that's all I had to do is just give a little more light and uh, she's good to go. This is where I'd go for the first session. When I come back next time, if we have to do it again, we can go do it again until we don't find anything. Then we start going after anything like meridians or um, other things that would be going on with the body. So this really takes care of 95% of everything that's going on with the horse. Very easy to do. And I hope you enjoyed this.